Mike, the concept of consciousness, this first person feeling of what it feels like to be me, is a question that science for a long time had nothing to do with. But it seems for some reason in the last decade or two to be kind of a hot topic among philosophers and even among some scientists. Right. How do you view the issue of consciousness from brain science? Well, how do I, you might, could ask how I view the, the various interpretations from science and from philosophers about it. And, the, and, and my short answer would be largely fictional. But we don't want to come to that. <laughs> now, let me just say that uh, when I was a young scientist, this was a, a central issue for me. I mean, it's a central issue for, for almost every young scientist <laughs> into the brain that I've met. And yeah. no, I used to think of myself as a sort of, I mean, my primary interest in science were in the principles of philosophy and psychology as they were expressed in the brain. And of course, this was a central selfish issue. But I've, I've changed my mind about it. It's not really the essential issue from the point of view of my understanding what I am. The, the essential issue for understanding what I am and how I relate to you really relates to my understanding of how my behavior is accounted for. So I do have this wonderful, you could call it phenomena, phenomenology of consciousness. I'm aware. I'm here. There is this presence, this, uh, this core presence. But I also am an acting creature. Mm -hmm. I'm in an environment in which I act, and my actions are based upon where I've been and where my brain has been. And they're based upon my personal history as it's grown and changed my brain. That we have a capacity to understand. And I think it's the more fundamental thing because it really relates to how I think of myself, my brain, my person, the evolution of the person, person that, that, that's occurred within me as an operating creature. That's occurred within my lifetime, within my skull. And that's what I want to understand. I want to understand because that really relates to how we think of brain science as it relates to societal organization, our jurisprudence, how we should think about uh, our, our, our fellow human being from the point of view of how we hold them responsible for their act or how we hold them in, 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 and admire them for their, for their great acts and so forth. So that's what I'm really most interested in. Is that more of a behavioral uh, approach to it, that we're, we're interested in behavior, but now, now we can go into the black box well, and, and I'm figure very out interested how in the sort of ongoing, persistent, and continuous activities. And I'm very interested in the process by which, by the fact of consciousness, my activities are centered. They're, they occur in a continuous stream in time from processes that are not so centered in time, right? So consciousness is a marvelous, powerful, you know, this, the fact of this sort of ongoing presence is a marvelous, powerful, centering process that keeps me on in control moment by moment as, a, as an actor and an operator in the world. I mean, it's a fabulous thing. But why does it do what it does? Why does it control my behavior in the way it does? How does it evolve? How has it created the person that believes the things I believe, that responds the way I respond? Now, is the it the consciousness? That does the th Pardon? The, what is the it? How does it, 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 it? Well, well, I, you know, these are, this is, this are, no, 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 as I, again, I would say nobody told the brain about any of these things, right? I mean, from my physical brain, I clearly comes this aware creature that is me, mm -hmm. I presume a, 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 the, the aware creature that is you. But why, why, why am I? How have I evolved as a person? What defines my personhood? You know, why, how has it been elaborated? How has it been, how has it been developed? Why does it believe the things it does? Why does it operate the way it operates? Now, part of this, of course, uh, stems from our humanity. We are humans. If we look at the writings of, of uh, Sophocles, let's say, or Homer, we see a description of humans that just like us right. in, their, in their social operations and their humanity. But in their operations in the world, they're very unlike us. Homer didn't, wasn't exactly good at driving cars, right? I mean, Homer really wasn't into the calculus, right? <laughs> From an operational point of view, we're entirely different creatures than they are. From the point of view of how we refine our ethic to control our behavior, I, sub, I submit I'm substantially different from Homer. Not necessarily better, but certainly different because it's been refined and defined in the context of a different cultural moment. And I'm very interested in how each one of us individually, uh, you could say, refines and elaborates what we are, our personhood, on the basis of where we, how, we, how it has arisen within the period of our own lifespan. Each one of us evolves as a person from nothing. 
as a function of the plastic operations of our brain within our own lifetime to be what we are. And I think that's the most important issue. What, what are we? How do we become what we are? I think that is the most important issue because that relates to my understanding of how you became what you are. And that's really the most interesting thing to me of, that c comes from contemporary brain science. I'm more interested in that than the spirit, than, in the, than, the, than the little, I'm very interested in how that ongoing awareness is so coherent, so strongly centered. I mean, that is a marvelous How accomplishment. How critical is that it, 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 to, the, to what you're talking about, this, this the development of, of the process and over, over a lifetime? How critical is the self-awareness, the internal uh, uh, sense of first person? Who well, I, don't, I think the origins of that are perfectly obvious. We know that the brain basically constructs associations of things that go with things, right? That's, its main, that's one of its main business. It's, it's constructed right. the relationships right. of of hundreds of thousands of things that go with other things, right? right. It's, it's sorted, categorized, identified, labeled, done all of this, all of this uh, process of, of semantic categorization in the world. Every time it does that, for every action, for every perception, for every, for every thought, it, there's a second reference. Vast areas of the brain are associated. Basically. Well, the second reference always occurs. And guess what it's to? It's to you. It's to the source. Billions and billions and billions of times in your history, the brain has made a second reference, and it's constructed it, massively constructed it, overwhelmingly massively constructed it. All of those other little things are picky -une compared to the billions and billions of times it's referenced what's happening to its source. And because it's sourced uh, in, in many of our activities, comes from the surfaces of our hides, it embodies it. It's not really, really the origin of the person that you identify as yourself. It's not really magical. Well, it's magical. It's a fabulous thing, right? But, it's, but from a point of view of a neurological process, it's not so magical. It's not so non-understandable. Now, what is more difficult to understand is that qualia, that essence, you know, the spirit, the flame, <laughs> right? And, we, we, and it would be wonderful, I hope, before I die. I doubt it. But I hope before <laughs> I die to, read, to, to have some wise man provide me with a crystal clear explanation of what it is of that continuous activity that, that is the source of the flame, that gives it its color and, and light. Uh, but it's enough for me to have a, a first-level perspective of why it does what it does and how the person, with its interest, with its activities, with its loves, with its terrors, arises within it. That we can understand, and that I think we do have a substantial understanding of.